Canadian inflation eased for a second month in a row in August, but it's still sitting at an annual rate of 7%. Of course, that's much higher than the Bank of Canada would like to see. Joining us now for what it means for interest rates and the economy overall, Michael O'Brien, Portfolio Manager at TD Asset Management. Michael, great to have you back on the program. Yeah, thanks for having me back. All right, so the big fight this year obviously has been against inflation, front and center for the, c center for the central banks, and then we get a, you know, a little cooler than expected print. Uh, does it do all that much for the, the path of bank policy in this country? Uh, I don't think it has a big impact on the next decision or two. Um, you know, I think the Bank of Canada is pretty locked in as to what they want to do in the next meeting or so. Um, but it's clearly a step in the right direction, um, no question about it. I think everybody realizes we need to see inflation come down so that the central banks can back off. Uh, and we probably need the central banks to back off before equities as an asset class start to move significantly um, higher. And so the fact that we've now had a couple months in a row where inflationary pressures seem to be um, peaking, if not backing off too, too much, uh, that's got to be taken, you know, let's take the wins where we can get them. This, this is a good news report. Take the wins where we can get them. At the same time, yep. we talk about eventually, you know, down the road, what it means for equities and for our equity portfolios. Yep. After the little summer rally, it's been a tough go again. As we said, the Fed is on deck for tomorrow, and depending on how tough Jerome Powell wants to speak to us, so let's. No, I want to get your opinion on that. How tough yep. is he going to speak to us? Because we had that summer rally, yep. and then you get Jackson Hole. And sometimes Jackson Hole can be a bit sleepy, but uh, he had some stern words, and they seem to be taking to heart finally. Yeah. Well, I think that's exactly it. So if you think back to earlier in the summer, pre Jackson. And whole. Um, I, I thought that the, the FOMC, the, the Fed committee, had been pretty clear about what they wanted to accomplish. Uh, they wanted to move fast, um, you know, quickly, sort of the front loading of the policy rate hikes, the same as the Bank of Canada, the same playbook. Um, and, it, you know, they communicated we want to get them up to a level that's going to slow inflation and accordingly slow growth. Uh, and then we want to hold them there for a while and see what happens. But if you go back to, I think it was July, there was a lot of uh, market enthusiasm about a so-called Fed pivot, um, which was to say that um, the Fed was on the verge of backing off. And you know, clearly that was not at all the intention. So I think Jackson Hole was really Chairman Powell setting the street straight and saying, no, 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 that's not what we're talking about. Rates are gonna be here for a while. Um, and so I think that was really the wake-up call was back then. Um, I think more and more people, as you know, the weeks have gone by since Jackson Hole, more and more people are getting the message that you know what rates are going to go higher from here, and then they're then they're going to stay there for a while. I think that was the disconnect that the the FOMC was probably troubled by in the summer. Was you know most of the investors, most of the forecasters, had rates going up to you know 375, 4, 425, which I think is a realistic landing point for uh, the Fed policy rate. But then they had these uh, interest rate cuts coming in, you know, in the second and third quarters of 2023. And I don't think that was acceptable to the, the FOMC. That's not what they wanted to communicate. So I think most people are on a, you know, more realistic plane right now, uh, you know, on the same page as the, the FOMC. So I wouldn't expect the same magnitude of uh, surprise um, coming out of tomorrow's decision. But at the same time, I, I don't think we should be any, under any illusion that they view their job as being done. Um, you know, there's more, there's more work to do here. More work, they said there would be pain as well. Yep. Uh, so when we take it back to, you know, the, the health of our portfolios, we, we do know the central bank, whether it's ours or whether it's the Fed, pretty serious about trying to tame inflation. Yep. In that pursuit, of course, the big concern is uh, they go too far and then you don't get a soft recession or a gentle yeah. recession or whatever it is that we hope a recession could look like that won't hurt us yeah. too much. Uh, you get some tough times. That doesn't sound like a great outlook for equities if they can't sort of land that soft landing. No, and, and that's obviously we've been seeing that reflected in, in the broader market action for several months now, right? Um, this, I mean, we've got to be realistic. This is a difficult environment for equities as an asset class. Um, by that, I mean if central banks are tightening pretty much in unison across uh, the planet with the you know, possible exception of uh, China and Japan. Everybody else is tightening policy rates. Um, growth is slowing because it needs to. Uh, inflation is enemy number one, like I say, not just here in North America, but across the planet. That is generally a difficult time for equities as an asset class to shine. It doesn't mean there aren't opportunities in the market. It doesn't mean that some stocks don't present opportunities. 
And it also doesn't mean that we're going to be in this state forever. I, what it means to me is we just have to be a little patient here. Um, better days will come, but in order to get to that point, um, we do need the central banks to stop raising rates. And the only way the central banks are going to stop raising rates is if they, you know, collectively they see inflation beginning to come down, not just on a one-off, not just one, you know, good report, but on a consistent basis across a, across a broad spectrum of measures. And so, like I said at the beginning, this was a nice outcome for the Canadian CPI report today because not only did you see the headline number come down, um, and not only is it you know, down nicely on the month, it's also down over a percent from June. So, you know, we're making progress, uh, but more than that, it's sort of the, beneath just the energy shock and okay, gasoline prices were up, gasoline prices were down. You know, the, the broader core measures of CPI in Canada actually trended in the right direction this month. And so I think what we need to see to get really, you know, more constructive on the market as a whole um, is we need a few more prints like this where the, the core measures, the broad swath of incoming price data is indicating that the worst is behind us because that's what the central bankers need to see to back off. Once the central bankers feel that they've done enough and, you know, can communicate to the markets that, you know, policy rates probably aren't going up a lot more, I think that's when we get more constructive, you know, sort of the, you know, all in on equities trade, but that isn't today. We still, we still have a ways to go to get there. You mentioned patience, right? Is that going to be the hardest sort of bit of discipline here for investors? I feel like we've gone through a long period where we didn't have to be patient, yeah. where, where the Fed or someone yeah. else would meet our needs if we weren't happy with the state of things. Yeah. And now we're just being told, uh, listen, you know, it, it's a long road and we're not going to run to the rescue. Patience seems to be, I, I should have it at my age. And I, I feel like I don't have patience for anything more. Yeah, anymore. who does? Yeah. Uh, no, I, I think you hit on a really important point, which is, um, this is a different environment than you know, most of us have gotten used to over the last decade. Over the last decade, the issue was that central bankers couldn't get enough inflation. They kept undershooting the policy, um, you know, the policy targets. And so because of that, every time it seemed like growth would waver, like you said, or you know, there was trouble on the horizon, something happened, something broke, uh, the central banks were very quick to come in and fix it because what they were fighting was inflation that was undershooting target. Um, so that's why the Fed was always our friend through that whole period. You know, we had, we had, you know, you hear the reference to the Fed put. In other words, the Fed's going to save the day. And they pretty much did for, you know, the better part of 10 or 15 years, I guess, going back to 2009. Uh, this is a very different environment. Uh, right now, so that was an alignment of interest. Investors and policymakers both had the same interest, which was to protect growth so that inflation could get back to target. Now there's the, the two, uh, those two parties are no longer aligned. Investors don't want the same thing as the central bank wants. The central bank wants slower growth and higher rates, less inflation. Um, you know, we, we tend to want lower, you know, lower rates and higher growth. <laughs> We're no longer on the same team. And so in those, you know, when you get this divergence of, you know, when, when they're no longer aligned, uh, that old maxim, don't fight the Fed, tends to carry the day. It's the central bankers that will prevail in this battle. And so to your point, that's why we have to just be patient and let this process play out.